Good morning, David. Good morning, Salim. David, this is a very, very important question. Sometimes it's uh, ignored by uh, a lot of um, uh, organizations and institutions. The question is, what are the risk escalation and risk delegation? There's a lot of um, specialist language used in risk management, like in any professional discipline. And these two terms, risk escalation and risk delegation, um, are used in a particular way in the risk management world. Uh, and it's important that uh, everybody is clear about, about what they mean. Mm -hmm. um, risks can exist at any level in an organization. Um, so we, wherever we have objectives, because risks are uncertainties that affect objectives, then wherever there are objectives, there are risks. But because the objectives exist in a layered way throughout the organization at different levels, then the risks also exist at different layers and different levels within the organization. Mm -hmm. And because the objectives are related to one another, the risks are related to one another. So it may be that we identify a risk at one level in the organization, which could affect another level above or below or alongside. Mm -hmm. And so what we have to have is a process, a, a mechanism for passing risks upwards in the organization or passing risks down in the organization or passing risks across to somebody else. Yeah. The terms that are used for passing risks up the organization, the term is to escalate Click. the risk. It's like a, an escalator is a moving stairway and it goes up. So you increase the visibility, you increase the level of authority, you increase the level of seniority of the people mm -hmm. who are aware of the risk and, and taking action on it. So if I identify a risk in my project, which doesn't belong to the project, but it belongs to the program, or it belongs to the department, I don't just hide that risk. I, I put it on the table and I hope somebody finds it. Mm -hmm. Or I don't throw it over my shoulder and say, nothing to do with me. I pass that risk on. And if I'm passing it on to a higher level, we use the word escalation. Slick. If I find a risk that affects someone below me in the organization, perhaps in the operations, or perhaps in a, in a separate department completely, then I can delegate the risk to somebody who would normally work for me or work with me. I could delegate a risk to a supplier or to a subcontractor. Um, then passing the risk down is delegation. Mm -hmm. So it's still something I, I'm aware of at my level, but I pass it down to somebody else to manage. Now, risk escalation and delegation are not the same as risk transfer. We talked in the section around risk process about risk response strategies. Yes. And we said we can transfer a threat, we can share an opportunity, but these are for risks that belong to the project. Mm -hmm. And even if I transfer the risk or I share the opportunity, it's still a project risk. It's my risk as the project manager, which yes. I need to pay attention to and take action on. I'm just transferring or sharing the ownership. But escalation and delegation are saying, this is not mine. So it's coming out of my risk register, doesn't belong to me anymore, I pass it to you and I pass it to you. Now, in order to do that, there are two things that we need. One is to have clear criteria mm -hmm. about what belongs to me and what doesn't. And the other is to have an, a transfer of ownership. So when I say to, I'm on a project, I say to my portfolio manager, I found this risk, it doesn't belong to me, it affects the portfolio, it should belong to you. You need to have that sort of handshake, that transfer that says, mm. the, pr the portfolio manager says, I understand that and I accept this risk and now I will pay attention to it and I will take action. I will manage it as one of mine. Or if you say to a supplier, now this is not for me, this is something to do with your organization or your mm. subcontract and so I'm going to delegate it to you. They have to say, yes, I understand that and I accept responsibility for it. So because there should be a knowledge and product evidence when we talk about escalation or delegation. Exactly. We need to have evidence of the, tran of the, of the transfer of ownership. Yes. So we're saying, uh, you don't just say, oh, well, I think the portfolio manager should take care of this, and then you forget, mm. because they may not agree. They may say, it's not for me, it's for somebody else and then the risk is, falls between the cracks and nobody picks it up and deals with it. So we need to have that uh, clear acceptance, that clear recognition, I'm passing it to you and you say, thank you very much, I've got it. 
But we need also those criteria that say, for example, on a project with a budget of maybe $1 million, and you have a risk with an impact of $5 million, mm -hmm. then you say, ah, this is too big for me. I give this to this person when it's $5 million. When, I, when it's less than $1 million, I keep it to myself. And so you have an escalation criteria which are agreed. Yes. Or delegation criteria, this is less than $5,000, I don't care about this, I pass it on to someone else. Yes. And so those kind of criteria need to be set as part of the scope of the risk management process of the project. Although you have uh, uh, escalated or delegated, uh, if that means you don't have any more any responsibility to deal with that risk. That's right. Uh, that's why el escalation and delegation criteria and ownership are really important. Because you're saying, I found a risk that is not mine, that doesn't affect my objectives. So I really don't care about it. It's an uncertainty that doesn't matter for me. Even the feedback to you is not important. Well, the only feedback you need is that somebody has accepted the risk and is taking it forward and they will manage it. Because it's a, as a professional, you don't want to see something that you know is important being forgotten. But it's not for me to manage. Mm -hmm. My only responsibility is to get it to the person who should be managing it and make sure they do. So the most important question here for project managers mm. will be how do they know this risk needs to be delegated or this risk needs to be uh, escalated? It's very simple. Because risk is the effect of uncertainty on objectives and a project risk is the effect of uncertainty on project objectives, mm -hmm. or as we said earlier, uncertainty that matters, if a risk doesn't matter, doesn't affect my project objectives, it's not mine. So anything that affects my project objectives, and I'm the project manager, is my objectives that's my risk, my responsibility. Not my objectives, not my risk, not my responsibility. Well, interesting. Thank you, David. That's my pleasure.